Okay, let's begin the next talk. Our speaker is Cameron McCombs from Dartmouth College, and he'll tell us about his index families of F continuous operators on BL2M. It is all yours, take it away. Thank you. Um, and I wanna, again, thank the organizers for um, you know, having a conference this great, um, allowing me to be here and give a talk. Um, I've never been to Toronto before, uh, and I'm loving it. I don't know, the vibes here, just uh, pretty great, right? Um, anyway, so let's get started. I want to talk today about uh, what I'm calling uh, these F continuous operators and how they relate to index theory. Uh, and so when I, I want to start um, with this description of the problem that kind of motivated uh, this work. Right? Uh, and this comes from uh, Tia and Singer's uh, fourth index paper, uh, where they define a families index for families of uh, elliptic pseudo differential operators. Okay? So, um, in doing so, they talk about um, having a continuous family of operators associated to a fiber bundle, right? Uh, and the reason for this is, is kind of, um, you know, I could just have a continuous family of operators where I just say I want it to be continuous in the operator norm, right? Um, and if you ask for that, maybe, uh, maybe you could try to define a family's index for a family that's uh, only like strongly continuous or something like that, but that turns out to be uh, too weak of a condition. Um, but just being continuous and the operator norm is actually too strong. So you can weaken it a little bit um, with this fiber bundle construction, right? So uh, once you do this, though, you kind of uh, end up with a couple questions. Uh, one, my operators um, are now on each fiber, L2 um, of ZY, but they're not even on the same space. So what do I mean for this to be continuous? Um, well, because it's a fiber bundle, I'm going to locally trivialize, and I would like this to be continuous uh, under local trivializations. And herein lies kind of uh, the meat here that we need to, to get into because um, once you start talking about local trivializations, you have like weird problems. So I wanna start with this example. Um, so maybe the easiest kind of construction I can have is a fiber bundle where uh, a trivial bundle, right? S1 cross S1. Uh, so the space that I'm on is uh, the circle and the fibers of the circle. And if I define, um, these diffeomorphisms that are just rotation by T, uh, and I conjugate uh, this multiplication operator where I'm uh, multiplying by this uh, you know, indicator function on some interval, right? Um, I wanna ask that this is continuous in the operator norm under any trivialization. So if I just leave things alone, like I don't like trivialize the bundle at all because it's already a trivial bundle, um, of course this is gonna be continuous in the operator norm. All of the my family of operators are all the same, right? M chi i. However, if I choose a different um, trivialization, I trivialize uh, by this conjugation of diffeomorphisms right here. Um, and I ask the question again, is this gonna be continuous in the operator norm? Well, uh, if I do a little bit of algebra, it turns out that this is the same as just asking um, what's the supremum norm of this function right here. And because I'm uh, you know, rotating a little bit, I'm always gonna have an interval uh, where one of the functions is on and the other one is off, right? So this is actually not continuous uh, right here at the origin, which is what I've showed. It's actually not continuous anywhere. Um, and so this is kind of a weird issue problem, right? Um, I've given an example of a constant family associated to a fiber bundle, but it's not uh, continuous under this local trivialization. So this is like really like what can go wrong uh, when you're trying to assign um, a family of operators to a fiber bundle. Right? Uh, so how do we fix it? Well, um, again, I, I want this to, to work under any um, you know, local trivialization that I have. Um, and kind of the key factor here is that if I wanna go from local trivialization to local trivialization, uh, it's gonna end up, like they're gonna differ by this conjugation of diffeomorphism, right? So it's no coincidence that uh, in the previous example right there, I, I was conjugating by this family of diffeomorphisms, right? Um, so we'll, we'll kind of make, um, you know, the clearest definition. I'll, I'll say that an operator is F continuous if for any smooth family of diffeomorphism uh, indexed by R, this map right here, uh, this conjugation by diffeomorphism is continuous in the operator norm, right? Um, and as an example, uh, if I take a multiplication operator by a continuous function G, um, then that kind of resolves this problem. Um, and you might be able to guess that from the picture. Yeah. So 
um, real briefly, I just want to say, like, you know, in the definition, I, I index by R, but that's actually not uh, a problem, right? Uh, it turns out that you can index by Rn, or you can index, uh, because it's a local, you know, continuity property, you can also index by a manifold or something like that. Um, and this is just because uh, if I have families of diffeomorphisms uh, indexed by R, I can build families of diffeomorphisms indexed by Rn uh, and vice versa, right? So they all end up giving you um, the exact same class of operators. Right. So um, here, I, I just want to um, kind of have my um, key detail here. Like, why is this conjugation of operators important? Well, like I said earlier, um, if I want to go between trivializations of my fiber bundle, uh, it's really just by a, a simple trick, um, you know, just conjugating by diffeomorphisms of M, right, the fiber. So um, like that is the key property of f continuity that's why this conjugation shows up and it's why um, this is kind of the right notion to be talking about um, for a continuous family uh, associated to a fiber bundle okay. uh, and luckily for us uh, it turns out that uh, you, you, because of this uh, connection right here you only have to check uh, if you have a family of f continuous operators you only have to check that it's norm continuous under a single trivialization right and then I'll guarantee that it's uh, norm continuous for any other trivialization. Right. So something interesting about this class of operators is that it actually forms uh, C star algebra. And you can show this with uh, just a, a little bit of work, right? Um, I prove it directly. Um, but I don't want to get bogged down in any of the details. Um, so, you know, I guess the, you know, obvious interesting question here is what does this C star algebra contain? Um, so you can show that uh, the compact operators are in this. Uh, I've already showed that uh, multiplication operators are in this, right? Um, it turns out that um, if you have an operator that takes smooth functions to smooth functions, and if I take the bracket of this operator with any vector field, it extends to uh, a bounded linear operator, then this also gives me an operator that is F continuous, right? Um, and this is important. This is a, a key thing that pseudo differential operators of order zero do, right? Uh, and so you can show that uh, this set, the pseudo differential operators of order zero, is a subset of C star of n. And actually, the closure of that is also in the C star of n because the C star algebra, right? Um, this is good because, you know, in a T and Singer family index, right, you want uh, to look at the family of uh, elliptic pseudo differential operators, right? Um, so it's a good thing that these things are actually in here, right? Okay. Um, so uh, I want to kind of, you know, take this and link it back to uh, index theory, right? So just as a little bit of a review, um, a Fred Holm operator is one that has finite dimensional kernel and its adjoint has finite dimensional kernel. Um, and you can calculate the index just by taking the difference of the dimensions of those two kernels. Um, and so, for a single operator, um, it's kind of determined exactly by the kernel of the operator and the kernel of its adjoint. Um, as we move to families of operators, uh, we want this to be true as well. We want the um, index to be kind of defined by the kernel uh, of the family and the kernel of the adjoint of the family, right? Um, so uh, we also want to kind of introduce um, so I want to introduce, you know, a vector bundle K theory here, right? Because um, if I have a family of kernels, uh, the hope would be that it forms a vector bundle. Um, and so that seems to be the, the kind of natural way to extend this to a family of operators, right? Okay. So um, if I want to do this, uh, I want to say that um, I can define a family's index for uh, F continuous families of operators. And all I mean by that is that every operator is F continuous, um, and it's also continuous uh, under some trivialization, right? Um, once you have those two things, um, then as long as you have uh, Fred Holm operators in your family, then you can define an index, right? And so um, what I've written down here, if you have, you know, it, it, kind of this extraordinary case where all of the kernels are finite dimensional, then, uh, or, sorry, all of the kernels are the same dimension, um, then, of course, they form a vector bundle. It's not too hard to see that. Um, now, in the Atiyah-Singer construction, um, 
you know, this works for uh, families where the vector bundles do not have uh, the same dimension, right? And to fix that problem, you just kind of add things from the uh, kernel of the adjoint over to the kernel uh, until it kind of balances out everywhere, right? Um, and so uh, this works for my F continuous families of uh, operators. Right? You can define a family's index in the same way that a TN singer uh, defined their family's index. Right? Um, and uh, of course, if you happen to have you know, a family of uh, elliptic pseudo differential operators, the index that I define here matches that index exactly. Right? So just a slight generalization. OK. So um, what I want to do now is uh, link this to um, C star algebraic K theory. Right? So just a, a, a little bit of a review. Um, oh. Anyways, so uh, we have K groups. Um, they form a cyclic six term uh, exact sequence. If you look at uh, a unit C star algebra A and its ideal, um, I don't really want to get bogged down too much in the details of what K naught and K1 are. Um, it's important that K1 has uh, uh, invertibles uh, in it, right? Um, and so if I have uh, this ideal J, then there is a homomorphism uh, called the index map that maps from k1 of a mod j to uh, k naught of j, right? And this is, of course, very suggestive naming. Um, so I want to just take a little bit of time and, and show that uh, if I take this short exact sequence of Caesar algebras, of course, the compact operators are uh, an ideal of b of h, right? And I, um, you know, try to calculate the index. Uh, it turns out that one, you can only calculate the index if your operator is Fred Holm. Um, because that's when uh, you have that this is uh, invertible, right? Uh, and two, if you um, kind of follow this chain of uh, isomorphisms here uh, under Morita equivalence, um, you can actually show that the index that you get from the index map is exactly the index of the Fredholm operator, right? Okay. So uh, um, our hope would be that uh, we can generalize this to the case um, that we have uh, with our family's index. Uh, and as it turns out, um, thanks to Dixmier, um, you can show that uh, if I look at all of the fibers and I take C star of ZY for each of the fibers, um, they actually form fibers themselves of a continuous field of C star algebras. And this is just like a bundle of C star algebras, right? So um, I can take uh, the continuous sections um, as defined by Dixmier here. And because y is compact, this actually forms uh, a C star algebra in and of itself that I'll denote C star of zy. So um, now if I take kind of the compact uh, analog of this, right, the compact operators from, uh, sorry, so I have the, this other C star algebra where uh, every fiber is, you know, the compact operator is on L2 of zy, right? This actually forms an ideal in C star of zy. So I can again uh, take a look at this short exact sequence um, I again have another chain of isomorphisms uh, where here my k naughts, um, right, my uh, compact operators on ZY uh, is Maria equivalent not to C but to uh, the continuous functions on Y because you have C for each fiber, right? Um, and so again, we get another isomorphism now to uh, the K theory of Y uh, vector bundle wise, right? And so um, if you calculate this index, uh, for this family of F continuous operators uh, in the C star algebra, again, it matches exactly what you would hope for. Uh, it gives you the uh, family's index that was defined earlier. Right? Um, it's over 205, right? Yeah. Okay. So then I guess maybe quickly, yeah, I would like to say one more thing. Um, I was kind of hoping here that uh, it would be easy to calculate um, the index of this family from the C star algebra itself, C star of ZY. Um, however, uh, you know, because if you do it uh, back in the one uh, object case, then you get, uh, you can uh, use the polar decomposition and that gives you um, a partial isometry and that lifts very easily to a unitary. Um, here, it's not so simple because uh, if you try to form the partial isometry, it's not actually an F-continuous family, uh, and so it doesn't work uh, the right way. And what I guess that's telling us is that um, you really do need to kind of mimic the Atiyah-Singer construction um, of balancing out the kernels, um, in this case by injecting this into a larger C-star algebra uh, in order for this to, to work, right? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.